you had such a fascinating um, upbringing and and childhood. And I've always had this theory that if someone is challenged when they're growing up and doesn't have a clear sense of their own identity because it's always being shifted around, that that can be an impetus to great things, even if it's unpleasant to go through at the time. And you, you, you grow up in India, but then you move to Nigeria at a pretty young age. Yeah, my parents can smell happiness. And the minute I find it, they move me like somewhere, <laughs> somewhere else. So, like, you know what they were doing? They were like, we want him to be really funny. Yeah. So uh, he seems happy right now. Yeah. Move him right. into, and stress him. So privileged household in India mm -hmm. um, and then get moved to Lagos, Nigeria, where I get my ass whooped every week because I'm the kid from India. And I do uh, public school in Lagos, Nigeria. And just as that's going really, really well, I'm like nine years old, private boarding school in India where I get my ass whooped because I'm the kid from Africa. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> then finally find a girlfriend, I think, in private school in India get taken to public school in New Delhi, which is where you get your ass booked because you're the kid from private school. Uh, <laughs> then American University where you're the kid from India. Go back to be in Bollywood where you're the kid from American drama school. And now in LA where you're the guy from Bollywood. Uh, so, 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 you know, it's, I fit in. And I do apologize for attacking you earlier. <laughs> when you walked in, I started hitting you. I yeah. just oh, yeah. thought, yeah, because your parents called me and they said, he's getting, ha he's happy again. <laughs> it's time. It's, yeah. uh, so how miserable were you when you were sent off to private school? Mm -hmm. I, I uh, went to public school, so I never had that experience of being sent, a sent away. Yeah. Uh, at a young age. And I know famously, I mean, there's people that write about it. It always sounds Dickensian to me, like a level of, uh, you know, you're very young and you're sent off to another country often mm -hmm. and that there's harsh treatment. And I think it just sounds like a nightmare for kids. It is. I was, my parents were in Africa and I was seven. So seven and a half when I went to boarding school in India. Oh my God. And, you know, so... I was also very dramatic. So I would write them letters in like red ink and be like, this is in my blood. You've forgotten about me. <laughs> you know? Oh my God. And, and, and then, wow. You know, then, you know, kids would try and run away from boarding school on a weekly basis. And because we're shitty friends, we'd like walk them to the gate of the school and like give them five bucks and be like, good luck, man. Like, I hope you make it. But like my parents were in Africa. And I tried to run away from India to Africa like four times from boarding school. <laughs> Technically hard to do. <laughs> Very hard to do. Wow. So, so, so you would take off. Would you? How far would you get? Like three kilometers. <laughs> you know? oh, no. But I feel like boarding school either graduates like generic boarding school people who you mm -hmm. can recognize a mile away. Right. Or like complete misfits. And I'm the second. There was this, uh, I was reading a, biography of Churchill, who always kind of fascinates me. And when he was v very young, his parents, of course, were, you know, uh, no, you know, quasi noble. And they were, very, his father was a very important person. And um, they, he was sent away at an absurdly young age. Yeah. And he always had minders. So he never really saw much of his parents. And his father is a, a famous politician. And one day, and he's very bitter about the fact that he's been sent away to this very tough yeah. English private school. And then he finds out one day that his father's in that town giving a speech. His town, his tiny little town where his school is and his dad didn't stop by and visit him. <laughs> and I was reading the letter and it was like, dear father, I'm hard pressed to think of why you couldn't at least wave at my window. <laughs> and of course, the father was like, you bugger off. <laughs> I have no time for this, but that's what it always sounds like to me. I'm prepping you to defeat Hitler. Is basically, yeah, exactly. you know, <laughs> like that's what you we, need to yes, defeat Hitler. Yes, we do need someone to stand up to Hitler about 40 years from now, and yeah. you're going to be the guy, and the only way to get there is to uh, totally treat you poorly right now. It's really sad. I, uh, I kind of pushed myself out of boarding school in a very disturbing way. So, so we were an ex- British Military Academy, 
Right. It's like a 150 year old school and we had these things called headmaster's cards and if you get 3 you're kicked out. And I decided by age 12 like I'm done. And uh my fa- my friend had appendicitis and his appendix had ruptured. And so one day I just went into the nurse's office and I'm like I have appendicitis. And she's like okay where does it hurt? And I and I said here where it hurt for my friend. Mm-hmm. Spent like 2 days in the hospital just eating ice cream. And then in the middle of the night they were like we're taking you to a different city you're going to get operated on. Oh god. And I was like oh uh, okay and then I, I'm in an ambulance and then the next thing I know I'm on an operation table right with two doctors who were like you sure this shit hurts and I'm like yeah. <laughs> right? you wait you stuck to it? Yeah. Oh. And and then my parents were in Africa at this point right and so I wake up after anesthesia uh like 18 hours later my mother from africa is sitting in the hospital in the north of india and her and two doctors look very pissed off <laughs> and they're just like his appendix was fine and then the boarding school was just like i don't think he's happy here <laughs> maybe oh. you should take him out so, so they opened you up yeah yeah pretty much you went under anesthesia and they opened you up they still took out my appendix to be safe like just because you know that they they were in there if you're in there you might as well but yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> they also they also took out a lung. Yeah. <laughs> We're here. That lung looks fine, but who knows, maybe one day we'll yeah. just take it. So wow, so that got your parents attention though. Yeah. And then I was sent off to public school <laughs> where um you know, it was a better journey. Like I think I was more meant for public school. Okay, so w- when's the moment it always fascinates me when you figure out I'm funny. I have a superpower. I think comedians either come from the coolest kid in school or the most bullied kid in school are usually comics right yeah. and the coolest kids i'd venture to say have less longevity in 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 comedy than the bullied kid and i just remember being the kid who would get his ass beat because he couldn't shut up and then not being able to shut up during the beating <laughs> you know what i mean like where i'd be like what is this really accomplishing does this make you feel better and i wouldn't shut up and then sometimes the guy beating you would crack a smile as well you know and you'd be like yeah i think this is funny uh, <laughs> I, i think i have i have to here. admit you're pretty funny <laughs> now where was i in the beating yeah uh yeah i i think so it, you start to notice i think a lot of times you start to notice it with your friends yeah. if you have any friends you can i always think that's where it starts uh and that you can make your friends laugh and then it's a a thing of how can i move how can i widen this circle a little bit yeah. slowly um to include other people who aren't my friends uh but i i like doing this so much i like making people laugh how can i expand out from there i think so but i also think making your friends laugh is sometimes like a disservice to comedy as well like you know the the first time i ended up doing stand up uh, i was in college and it was like my last year and i'd gone through like four years of drama school so four mm-hmm. years of sitting in a circle and crying and holding hands and doing things like emoting with your shoulders or whatever the hell they tell you to do in drama school right yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like very, i've noticed you emote exclusively <laughs> with your shoulders yeah. it there's is a lot of motion up there the basis of bollywood my friend <laughs> is, really? is emoting yeah. with your shoulders <laughs> oh you're right yeah wow okay yeah. all right and uh I ended up writing like as a almost rebellion this show. Remember there was a movie called White Men Can't Jump? Yes. Yeah. So I wrote a show called Brown Men Can't Hump uh <laughs> in my final year of college. And so the first time I did stand up it was like 65 minutes for 800 people. Wow. And all friends, you know, every, so just inside stories and you yep. feel like you're like I'm the shit. I'm amazing at this. Cut to you at an open mic in Chicago like 3 weeks after graduation getting booed off stage. and you discover no i need to be able to make strangers laugh yes as yeah. well 